In the previous video, we had a Haywood case in a factor analysis. Let's take a look at what's the cause of a Haywood case and how would you interpret one if you, if you get one in your actual own research. So the idea of a Haywood case and admissibility is that all variances must be positive because a variance quantifies the degree of variation and something can't have a negative variance. It's like a, you can't have negative uh, length, for example. Then uh, this is our example. So we have a three indicator factor model here. We have model implies correlation matrix here. We have here the empirical correlation matrix and we estimate the factor model. So we will get a uh, factor loading. These are standardized. So the uh, factor is scaled by setting the, uh, the variance of the factor to be one. We can see that we have a correlation that exceeds one that is not possible. And we have variance that is below zero, which is not possible either. So this is the, uh, the Haywood case. So it's a negative error variance. Variances can't be negative. It is inadmissible because it's an impossible solution. Now, what do we do with it and, and why does it occur? It occurs in this case, it occurs because of sampling error. So the correlations here are never at exactly at their population values. And uh, sometimes it uh, happens that we'll get negative estimates. The reason for that is that if we repeat this, this is simulated data set. If we repeat the estimation of this factor model over and over, the real error variance is 0 0.19 and the real factor loading is 0 0.9. If we estimate this factor loading of that has that real value of 0 0.9, many, many times and we have an unbiased estimator, then the estimates are correct on average. So the estimates are centered uh, around the correct population value 0 0.9. If our sample size is, is small, then it means that the estimates, any individual estimate is not exactly at 0 0.9, but it is somewhere around 0 0.9 here. If the estimates are also normally distributed, then we have this negative tail here. And we also have this positive tail here. And uh, we can see that if we have some estimates that are below 0 0.8, then because of unbiased as a normality, some estimates go uh, above one. So it's possible that if you have a very good estimator and the population value is very large, and if or, or the population error variance is very small, then uh, and your sample size is small, then you will get, because of the normality and unbiased of the estimates, we will get these inadmissible results. So uh, what do you do about it? Well, there are two things that can cause Haywood case. One thing is a small sample, highly reliable indicator and small sample, we could estimate this uh, 0 0.19 as uh, being negative. Another thing that Haywood case can indicate is that your model is so severely misspecified. So that uh, you're not the factors that you're specifying are not actually the correct factors. So you're specifying the factor structure incorrectly. And that can cause some of the estimates to become inadmissible as well. So how do you know which one is the case? Is it a, a symptom of a model misspecification or is it just because you have a, an unbiased estimate, estimator that is normally distributed and you have a, a population value that is close to being the maximum or minimum? You, you don't know for sure, but one thing that is uh, sure is that if you have a variance that is, let's say, uh, minus two and a factor variance that is one, then uh, that can be because of small sampling fluctuations. So if your estimate, estimated uh, error variances are way beyond, below zero, then that's an indication of a problem. If they are, are slightly below zero, then you could say that maybe that the, the population value is actually a small positive number, but it's only a small sampling fluctuation thing. You don't know, but if uh, you have small values, then I would be okay with just you saying that the indicator is highly reliable.